Good morning and welcome. By the authority given in the statutes of the Open University, I declare this congregation open for the conferment of degrees and the presentation of graduates. Distinguished guests, graduates, family and friends, it's my privilege and pleasure to welcome you all to the seventh of the Open University's degree ceremonies being held in 2022. I'm also delighted to welcome to the ceremony key supporters of the university who have found time in their very busy diaries to be with us today. And a very special welcome to our honorary graduate, Mr. James Timpson, OBE. We're delighted to be able to honor you today, James. Each year, the Open University awards a range of qualifications that you've all worked so hard for, from certificates of higher education to doctorates. Throughout 2022, more than 8,000 graduates are being presented for their qualifications at our degree ceremonies. For my colleagues, and certainly for me, they are highlights of our year because we're celebrating your success. The ceremonies are held throughout England, as well as in Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland, and the Republic of Ireland. You're graduating from the largest university in Europe with an extraordinary scale, scope, and reach. And that success is down to what our graduates achieve, and not just the qualification you're presented for today, but the difference that you'll make with it. So it goes without saying that today is a very important occasion in the life of you, our graduates, your families and loved ones, as well as the university and my colleagues who, I hope you will feel, have nurtured and supported you. Now you could be forgiven for thinking that the occasion is so important that it needs to be solemn. You'd be quite wrong. In every sense, this is a day of celebration. So I personally will be very disappointed if anyone crosses the stage today to anything less than thunderous applause or whatever other way you choose to express your enthusiasm and support. I have seen cartwheels, they're not compulsory. <laughs> With that in mind, could I ask all of today's graduates who are able to do so to stand, please? Families, friends, and Open University colleagues, let's start today's ceremony by giving all our amazing graduates a huge round of applause. There'll be plenty more opportunities for that. So graduates, you can uh, sit down again. There's one other way you can show your appreciation to your graduate who's here today. If you post messages or photos on social media, be sure to use the hashtag OUFamily to share your congratulations and celebrations with the wider OU community. It's always a massive pleasure to me when I see stuff on social media about the amazing successes of you as graduates. I love to see it, so, so please do use it if you can. Today's ceremony will begin with the presentation of those graduates who've gained higher degrees degrees of Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Engineering, and Bachelor of Laws. They will be presented by Mr. Billy Coker, Head of Student Support in Academic Services. We will then see the awarding of the honorary degree of Doctor of the University to Mr. James Timpson, OBE, Dr. Owain Smolovich jones Senior Lecturer in People Management and Organization in the Faculty of Business and Law, will present James Timpson, who will sign the honorary graduates book and make a reply. Then we will continue <coughs> our presentation of graduates with those who have gained Bachelor of Science degrees, Foundation degrees, and Diplomas of Higher Education. I will then conclude the ceremony with a final address to you, our graduates. I now call upon Mr. Billy Coker to present graduates.
Pro Vice Chancellor, I shall now present graduates who have gained higher degrees and have been able to attend here today. For the degree of Doctor of Philosophy, I present to you for a thesis entitled Parents' Perspectives and Practices Around the Schooling of Their Children in Rural Areas of North Central Nigeria, Bukola Oyinloye. I present to you for the degree of Master of Arts in Art History, Derek Cox. Edmund Wilkins. For the degree of Master of Arts in Childhood and Youth, I present Emma Judson. For the degree of Master of Arts in Creative Writing, I present Rebecca Dunn. <laughs> Elizabeth Mitten. <laughs> David Slater. For the degree of Master of Arts in Education, I present Ruth Bullimant. <laughs> For the degree of Master of Arts in English, I present Alison Campbell. For the degree of Master of Arts in History, I present Rachel Bailey Gibson. <laughs> For the degree of Master of Arts in Online and Distance Education, I present Joe Jones. For the degree of Master of Arts in Philosophy, I present Philip Martin. <laughs> For the degree of Master of Arts in Translation, I present Angela Delaney. Sophie Elan. <laughs> Penelope Morris. For the degree of Master of Business Administration, I present Gilles Beasley. <laughs> Reka Patel Harrison. <laughs> Kavita Raghavendran. Thank you. 
Martin Rusko. <laughs> Daniel Taylor. For the degree of Master of Business and Administration, Leadership Practice, I present Srikanth Balachandran. For the degree of Master of Education, I present Monica Booth. Graham Rimmer. <laughs> Sarah Sargison. <laughs> Melanie Tickle. For the degree of Master of Science in Advanced Networking, I present Santosh Gurung. <laughs> For the degree of Master of Science in Computing, I present Jonathan Bullock. Jeffrey Gilbert. <laughs> Phil Hackett. <laughs> For the degree of Master of Science in Development Management, I present Lucy Price. For the degree of Master of Science in Environmental Management, I present Trevor Povey. <laughs> For the degree of Master of Science in Forensic Psychological Studies, I present Stephanie Hughes. Nisa Whittaker. <laughs> For the degree of Master of Science in Human Resource Management, I present Christine Zangari. Laura Hoyle. Lizzie O'Dell. For the degree of Master of Science in Mathematics, I present Jerry Davoji. For the degree of Master of Science in Mental Health Science, I present Luxmore Malanga. <laughs> Douglas Rowe. For the degree of Master of Science Open, I present Sarah Hills. <laughs> For
for the degree of Master of Science in Psychology, I present Duncan McGee. Andrea Waite. For the degree of Master of Science in Science, I present Stuart Voitella. For the degree of Master of Science in Space Science and Technology, I present Mark Leaves. <laughs> Gregory Marsh. Pro Vice Chancellor, I shall now present graduates who have gained Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Engineering, and Bachelor of Laws degrees and have been able to attend here today. The full subject details are printed in the insert within the ceremony program. I present for the degree of Bachelor of Arts, Jennifer Allen. Ikra Amin. Nicole Anderson. Christian Atkin. Claire Barkley. Matthew Bates. Joanna Bayfield. Kimberly Best. <laughs> Sam Bratley. <laughs> Emma Britton. Naomi Broom. <laughs> Paige Burgess. <laughs> Beverly Berry. Julia Carmen. <laughs> Nick Carney. <laughs> Sean Cartwright. Jack Catlow. <laughs> Zoe Chadwick. <laughs> Liz Chu. <laughs> Katie Clift. Suzanne Conahan. <laughs> Ms. 
Tracy Copestake. Sarah Collett. Josephine Coyne. Deborah Cranny. Joanne Crone. Alison Davis. <laughs> Lindsay Davis. <laughs> ben Davis. Laura Deacon. Rachel Deering. Miriam Duick. Claire Drake. <laughs> Lucy Dunning. <laughs> Donna Evans. Laura Evans. Claire Farmer. Mishka Fielding. Jimmy Fozard. <laughs> Sandra Garthwaite. <laughs> Alexandra Glass. Daniel Gleave. <laughs> Raphael Gordon. Adela Grant. <laughs> Beverly Green. <laughs> Lauren.
Linda Greenfield. Nikki Greenwood. Michael Gribble. Scott Griffiths. Naila Habib. <laughs> Shelley Hampson. <laughs> Kim Hardika. Catherine Harrigan. <laughs> Nick Hutton. <laughs> John Hodgkinson. Amanda Hudson. <laughs> Heather Johnson. Suzanne Jones. Christopher Kelly. Jonathan Lloyd. Kelly McLean. <laughs> Emily Ma. <laughs> Danica Mann. Michael Magai. <laughs> Nicola Marsden. <laughs> Gail Matienga. Nicola McClellan. <laughs> Ashley Miller. <laughs> Ali
Alan Morris. Kulsoon Muller. Corinne Mulroney. <laughs> Mongani Nube. <laughs> Deborah Owen. Emily Phillips. <laughs> David Philpott. <laughs> Joanne Price. Samuel Price. Adam Ritchie. Daniel Sabino. Ed Santana. Kimberly Shasky. Anthony Scott. Louise Scott. <laughs> Kerry Sedgwick. <laughs> Davidia Jane Semper. Pam Sargent. <laughs> Felix Shoniwa. <laughs> Nicola Shrimpton. Luke Simmons. <laughs> Naomi Slater. <laughs> Lauren Spensley. Adam Stanley. <laughs> Alison Stevenson. <laughs> Ken Hill.
Megan Swarbrick. Sharon Taylor. Yuri Taylor. Christelle Thomas. Danielle Thomas. Jessica Travis. Emma Trayford. Mary Trepchik. <laughs> Ashley Veres. <laughs> Christopher Verity. Charlotte Wallace. <laughs> Eleanor Walton. Adam Ward. Madeline Webb. <laughs> Ingrid West. <laughs> Nicholas Wilding. Diane Wilkinson. <laughs> Barry John Williams. <laughs> Aaron Wilson. Emma Woods. <laughs> Marie Yo.
For the degree of Bachelor of Engineering, I present Matt Clark. John Henry. Victoria Jones. Robert K. Caroline Keenan. Kenneth Shepherd, <laughs> Jacob Singer, <laughs> Jamie Veitch. Patrick Waite. <laughs> Philip Whelan. And for the degree of Bachelor of Laws, I present Jamil Bashir. <laughs> Victoria Carnell. Yolanda Castaneda Barbosa. <laughs> Jessica Chilwa. <laughs> Angela Clegg. Andy Davis. Yeah. Abby Hayes. Yeah. Samantha Higginbottom. Bethany K. Wright. <laughs> Ashley Milling. <laughs> David Olicky. Sarah Rush. <laughs> Susie Shaw.
Matthew Turner. Pro Vice Chancellor, colleagues, graduates and guests. James Timpson is one of the nation's most effective and inspirational business leaders, whose commitment to investing in and supporting people to achieve their full potential is central to the success of his organization and an example to us all. James is the latest Timpson to steer the family business and, Having begun his career on the shop floor, he has served as chief executive for the past 20 years. The Timpson business is nearly 160 years old and is perhaps best known for key cutting and shoe repairs, but also fixes watches, mends phones, cleans clothes, engraves jewelry and prints photos. Where other retailers have sometimes struggled to adapt to contemporary changes, Timpson has expanded, in part through concessions in supermarkets and pods in car parks. The business is celebrated for its philosophy of upside-down management, in which those working on the shop floor are recognized as the most important members of staff. Believing that a family-run business should treat all staff as part of the family, Timpson prides itself on taking care of people ranging from time off for landmark occasions, a happy index which measures how staff are feeling, and, crucially, a belief in paying people as much as we can afford rather than as little as we can get away with. This sense of social responsibility extends beyond their immediate family. For example, Timpson offers unemployed people free dry cleaning when they have a job interview. But Timpson also stands out for its commitment to employing ex-offenders. Many years ago, while on a tour of a local prison, James met a young man who he thought would make a great employee. And since then, Timpson has gone on to employ thousands of people who have served time, including many on day release. Timpson also invests hugely in prison education establishing academies which help prisoners gain invaluable skills, preparing them for reintegration, employment, and a better life. James is clear that giving people who are desperate to turn their lives around a second chance has huge benefits for both employee and employer, resulting in a committed, enthusiastic, and loyal workforce. As a result, he is a passionate advocate for prisoner and ex-offender employment. A former chair of the Employers' Forum for Reducing Reoffending, he is now chair of the Prison Reform Trust. James also chairs the Employment Advisory Boards for the Prison Estate. James has been awarded an OBE, was the recipient of the Business Leader of the Year Award at the National Business Awards in 2020, and previously served as the Prince of Wales Ambassador for Responsible Business in the Northwest. He is also a trustee of the Tate Galleries. At the Open University, we share James's commitment to helping those with criminal convictions turn their lives around. We have been working with students in prison for more than 50 years, offering everything from basic skills to advanced degrees. Our business school, and the research centre I direct, are committed to exploring possible features of work that are empowering and even emancipatory. We are therefore delighted to honour James's exemplary leadership and contribution to British business. Pro Vice-Chancellor, 
by the authority of the Senate, I present to you for the honorary degree of Doctor of the University, James Timpson. Pro Vice-Chancellor, Open University colleagues, fellow graduates, guests, family and friends, thank you to the whole Open University community for awarding me this honorary degree of Doctor of the University. It's a huge privilege to be recognised and associated with this fantastic institution. My great-great-grandfather, who died in 1929, would have been proud if he knew I was here today. Only a mile from here, in 1865, he started selling shoelaces on his bicycle, selling enough to open up his first shop on Oldham Road, just the other side of Piccadilly Gardens. By 1903, he'd opened up a shoe repair shop around the corner from here. The rest, they say, is history. The business was very different in those days, but in some ways, it operated still in a relevant way than we do today across our 2,100 shops. We're a family business, and we operate through the values of trust and kindness, just as they did 165 years ago. My fellow graduates, you will have all have had different experiences of work and ambitions for how you want to be led or to lead yourself. Even though I doubt any of you dreamt of being a cobbler, I hope my brief insights into what works may be helpful to you in your careers and your, all the things you do in the future. If a business or for that matter, any organization has an overriding goal to get bigger, to make more money, and to employ more people, it will probably fail. However, if your goal is to be the kindest, happiest place to work, where individuals are treated as friends, and where their happiness is derived from being an equal, success will probably follow. It's simple, but it's amazing how few organizations do it. So my first piece of advice is don't chase the salary, chase the culture. If your values are aligned and you're treated with kindness, you'll undoubtedly thrive and be far happier, and I suspect the salary will follow too. My second insight is based on the values of trust. It is sad how few organizations rarely trust people to make decisions. I believe that the more you trust people, the better the organization works the better services customers and users get, and the happier everyone is. In the Timpson business, we only ask for two rules to be followed. Just put the money in the till and look the part. The rest, everyone can decide themselves what is best. So we now have happiness and trust as the two vital elements for a successful career. However, the only problem I've found with the culture of trust and kindness is that it only works if you find the right kind of people. People like you, people who get it, people who have the right kind of personality. And these people can be found in the most unusual places. Over the last 20 years, I've been recruiting people from prison to work in our shops and offices. We recruit them because they're great, and we also believe in second chances. We pick people based on their personality rather than what's on their CV. Working alongside people with lived experience of prison, of addiction, and of trauma isn't just rewarding emotionally. As you watch them thrive, it's rewarding commercially too. Fortunately now, Timpson isn't the only company who wants to employ ex-offenders. Hundreds of other people recognize the untapped talent pool we have in, in our prisons. By recruiting just on personality, we've managed to find far better people and give people hope. It's also a lot of fun giving someone a second chance. Open University has had an important part to play in this. When I walk the wings of our prisons, which I do most weeks, 
looking for talented people to join us, I'm often shown certificates like you are receiving today from prisoners who've taken courses and passed degrees from the Open University. By supporting students in secure environments since the 1970s, this institution has done more than most to help people turn their lives around and get that second chance. For this, and the honorary doctorate, I am very humbled and grateful. Thank you. Pro Vice-Chancellor, continuing the presentation of graduates, I shall now present those who have gained Bachelor of Science degrees and Diplomas of Higher Education and have been able to attend here today. The full subject details are printed in the insert within the ceremony program. I present for the degree of Bachelor of Science, Safina Ahmed. Christopher Ajay. <laughs> Elaine Allen. Joseph Allen. <laughs> David Ashcroft. <laughs> Mo Azam. Delroy Blake. <laughs> Alexandra Bailey Mayotte. <laughs> James Bailey Mayotte. Oh. Heidi Boswell. <laughs> Anthony Burnett. <laughs> Paul Burroughs. Andrew Campbell. <laughs> Quan Chan. <laughs> Paige Clayton.
Lois Koipel. Susan Crabtree. Tobias Crichton Kane. Diego Datilia. Tara Davis. Joanna Dunstan. Tracy Durant. Emma Elliott. <clears throat> Kimberly Evans. <clears throat> Lois Evans. <clears throat> Joanne Greenhouse. <laughs> Bethany Hamilton. <laughs> Jane Harrowing. Ellis Hart. James Hart. Poppy Hepworth. Holly Ann Hill. <laughs> Catherine Holt. Alison Jenner. <laughs> Malgozata Jeski. <laughs> Gabrielle Johnson. Robert Keeling. Binot Karung.
Lucy King. Matthew King. Victoria King. Simone Langley. Eve Lees. Amy Leslie. Carmen Ling. <laughs> Jennifer Lister. <laughs> Hafsa Malik. Soraya Marquise. <laughs> Roseanne Marshall. <laughs> Haley Marvel. Dean Mayudeli. <laughs> Sophie McKenty Morris. <laughs> Samantha McManus. Christopher McRobert. <laughs> Amanda Mellinson. Adam Midgley. <laughs> Vicky Miller. <laughs> Jonathan Moss. Joy Mycock. <laughs> L 
Louise O'Connor. <laughs> Dennis O'Halloran. Kelly Pearson. <laughs> Becky Peters. Mary Rose Quilty. Claire Robinson. Simon Rogers. Rebecca Romaine. <laughs> Amy Rowley. Sharon Rusk. <laughs> Nina Ryan. Saima Sarwar. <laughs> Rebecca Shell. <laughs> Haley Sherritt. Billy Monsibanda. <laughs> Becky Sim. <laughs> Michael Speakman. Zoe Steen. <laughs> Lauren Thacker. Osamudia Owadia. <laughs> Penny Walker. <laughs> J. 
Jane Weeks. Jack Whittier. <laughs> Eve Williams. <laughs> Neil Worthington. And for the Diploma of Higher Education, I present Rudolf Brustmann. <laughs> Angela Downey Beecham. Janelle Ewan. George Simpson. Sylvia Taylor. <laughs> Kerry Williams. And I just assure you that those of you who saw me coughing, I did do a COVID test before I came and it was negative, <laughs> so, but, but I am a little bit hoarse. Um, I'd like to ask if all of the um, today's graduates could please stand, if you're able to, and ask the assembled guests to congratulate these amazing individuals again. <laughs> Thank you, you may be seated, uh, just for a moment, <laughs> might make you get up again in a minute. Um, it's been a real privilege for me um, to meet all of you as you've walked across the platform today and I've been asking some of you about what you're going to do next and quite a few people said they were going to do more study which is fantastic, quite a few people said they were going into teaching or into nursing, that they got jobs there and that just made me so proud so proud to be part of the Open University that's helped you all uh, to make those steps in your lives. And, and many of you have done it while you've been working, 
while you've been raising families, uh, somebody had a baby in her third year that I spoke to, um, and, and everybody said uh, everybody said they enjoyed it. One one lady I said, did you enjoy it? And she said, no. And then she didn't say no. She said so much. She said not much. I thought she said not much, but actually she said so much. But fortunately we corrected that. So yeah. So um, she, uh, I think people have really enjoyed their journey, but. It is a very difficult journey. So um, I'm going into my formal bit of speech now. So as the Pro Vice Chancellor students of the Open University, I could not be more proud of you, of what you, our graduates, have achieved, often against the odds, with your work, family, and other commitments, and sometimes many other challenges in your lives. It's something that we say quite often at, at the Open University about life intervenes in our study. It intervenes in everybody's study, but if you're, if you're a, a mature student, if you're taking care of a family, if you're working, all of those things combine to bring more into your life that can get in the way of your study. And I think it's just amazing to see so many people who are able to overcome all of those things and to make the journeys that you've had. And a couple of people talked to me about transforming their lives, which is fantastic. I think today you are the most amazing body of graduates anywhere in the world. You've believed in yourselves, and we've believed in you, all of us. Your dedicated associate lecturers and advisors, the academics who write your courses, the designers and the technologists who bring them to life, and all the professional services that make the Open University what it is, second to none. And now you've shown what that belief can achieve. And some of you are going to go on with that belief and achieve more. Um, some of you are going to go into work and make a difference. And that's just amazing and fantastic. I know it will have often been tough. That would be the case in normal times, let alone getting through a pandemic. Many of our students studying through the pandemic were having to manage, juggle, working from home, studying from home, and homeschooling their kids on the computer that they use for everything else. So uh, we don't underestimate the challenge that you faced. You've juggled the study and deadlines with many other demands. And it's no wonder that employers tell us what they like about OU graduates is that you're determined and driven. But I have been told that there is one thing that's harder than being an OU student, and that's actually living with one. So I, I can tell by the reactions there that a few people recognize that. So what I would like to ask our graduates to do today is, if you're able to stand once again, to thank your family and friends in the traditional way. So if you could stand up and applaud your family and friends for all the support they've given you. sit down now. So, when the Open University started back in 1969, our pioneer students and staff really were taking a step into the unknown. They were putting their faith in a university that was using new methods of teaching and would be open to everyone. Many thought that the OU would fail, but instead it is now one of the most successful universities in the world, with over two million people who've studied with us, that's not just a university, it is a social movement. It's you, our students, who make the OU what it is, but we also owe a huge debt of gratitude to the vision of the university's founders. Foremost among them was Jenny Lee, to whom Prime Minister Harold Wilson gave the job of setting up the university, a woman whose own journey from a Scottish mining community to Minister of State shaped in no small measure what the OU is today. Jenny, Jenny Lee believed that the OU had to be a university for everyone, whatever their background, and it would do that while maintaining the highest academic standards. You, our graduates, have achieved those high standards of scholarship and professional practice that she was determined we'd maintain while opening up that opportunity to more people than ever before. She was determined, too, that we would be a respected research university making discoveries, inventing new products, enabling us to understand each other better and to live together peacefully and without endangering our planet. 
Curiosity is what drives us, and I'm so glad that you chose to join that most human of adventures to learn and live, as it says in the University Crest. Completion of your qualification means you join a community of open university alumni around the world. You can continue to keep up with news, access careers advice, or come back to your study. You are still, you always will be, a member of the Open University family. As you leave today, I hope you'll become an ambassador for the OU and all we stand for, our values of social environmental justice, our commitments to inclusion and diversity, and above all, our mission to be open to people, places, methods and ideas. And I was very struck when James was giving his address uh, uh, around the synergy between the, um, the, the values that he was talking about in respect of kindness and trust and how well they sit with um, open university um, values. Do share your experience with others. Let them know what your journey has meant to you and what it could mean to them. We're hugely proud of you and thankful to everyone who supported you through your journey. So now, again, I'm going to ask all of today's graduates to stand for the last time. <coughs> and I'm going to ask everybody to give one last huge round of applause for these amazing people. So I'm afraid all good things must come to an end, but I hope you will carry on celebrating with your friends and family, and I wish you the very best of luck in your future lives. The proceedings of this degree ceremony have been completed, and I now declare this meeting of congregation closed. So would all who are able to do so please stand? <laughs>